So there's a story out in the Washington Post about uh, the relationship between Donald Trump and his chief of staff, John Kelly. Now lately it's been quite rocky uh, and John Kelly was trying to impose order. And of course that uh, is problematic when you have Trump as president who is basically King Joffrey. So he's got a massive temper, he's uh, got a huge ego to deal with, very thin skin and he acts like a child. So this story has all of that. First of all, uh, on his temper and his thin skin, apparently he was furious at John Kelly on the issue of immigration because of something he said on Fox News. And of course, that's the only thing that Donald Trump pays attention to. So let's explain that. After Kelly told Fox News Channel's Brett Baer in a January interview that Trump's immigration views had not been, quote, fully informed during the campaign and had since, quote, evolved. The president berated Kelly in the Oval Office, his shouts so loud they could be heard through the doors. Now, a normal president, I don't think, yells at, it, at his chief of staff in that way. Maybe in the old days they used to do that, but it does seem a bit childish. Um, you know, you could just fire him. So there's a lot of different ways to get your chief of staff uh, to be aligned with you rather than having a temper tantrum, but that's Donald Trump. I uh, apparently had a similar one uh, when uh, Nielsen was put as the uh, Department of Homeland Security head. And that was a suggestion by John Kelly uh, that was then criticized by other conservatives, um, likely Fox News. And so uh, Trump, of course, hadn't asked anything about the person he was appointing, didn't know a thing about her, uh, took John Kelly's advice and just appointed her. And so then when he found out certain things he apparently didn't like, he apparently yelled at Kelly, you didn't tell me she was an effing George W. Bush person. By the way, you child, you could have asked, you're his boss, but you don't care to do your homework. And so all you wanna do is lash out at people if uh, Fox News says something unkind about you or Ann Coulter or fill in the blank about any conservative pundits who now apparently run the country. So uh, of course, this has led to a, a huge rift and, and this uh, conflict has been going on for some time. So Washington Post further reports, uh, both his credibility, referring to Kelly, and his influence have been severely dis diminished, administration officials said. A clear decline for the retired four-star Marine Corps general who arrived with a reputation for integrity and a mandate to bring order to a chaotic West Wing. So um, since he has brought some degree of order, the child doesn't like it. He doesn't like being told no, and he doesn't want to eat his vegetables, and he just wants strawberry milk at all times. So he's like, why, why are you bringing your order, I don't like it. So he's now diminished um, his own chief of staff's role. This official explained that Kelly initially viewed his job as babysitting, but now feels less of a need to be omnipresent. While Trump, who once considered Kelly a security blanket, feels increasingly emboldened to act alone. God help him. All right, I added that last part. So these are Sources all within the White House and allies of the President, Washington Post spoke to 16 different folks here for this story. So unsurprising that Kelly viewed the job as one of babysitting because we have a man child for President. And he is getting awfully tired of being bossed around by a man with a tiny, tiny intellect, let alone the other problems that he's got. Uh, and now Trump, <laughs> since again, he's Joffrey, thinks I got this. I know how to do presidenting now. John Kelly, step aside. I don't need that security blanket anymore. Good luck with that approach. Um, in fact, the Post reports that Kelly has threatened to resign on multiple occasions. Um, it's sort of a weekly event, one senior White House official quipped. Though officials explained his declarations as expressions of momentary frustration. I don't believe that at all. Uh, remember, those are White House sources, and they have different agendas. And you should keep that in mind. And some are pro Kelly, some are against Kelly, and are parts of the different factions of the White House. So you have to use your own reason and the rest of our experience with the Trump White House to determine uh, what you think is correct and not correct. Now we go to Axios for further context on how serious the rift is. Uh, Kelly blew up a Trump in an Oval Office meeting that day, which is was very late in March. While walking back to his office, muttered he was going to quit. So this is a separate report from the Washington Post one, backing up a similar storyline. So they explain the, the details of what happened that day. Kelly packed up some personal belongings, though I'm told that wasn't necessarily because he was walking out. 
He was fired up enough that colleagues got allies to call in to calm him down. And at one point, DHS Secretary Kirsten Nielsen, the person I was referring to earlier, perhaps the person in the administration he trusts most, came over to talk him off the ledge. So I got news for you, a person um, isn't kidding about quitting or isn't doing it as a gesture or a momentary frustration if they pack up their personal belongings and have to be talked off a ledge. That means he was actually going to quit. And who could blame him? Who, who could tolerate this child constantly yelling at you? I mean, to add insult to injury, if you work with him, it's got to be blindingly obvious how low his intellect is. And for this idiot of idiots to order you around and embarrass and humiliate you nonstop has got to be maddening. So I blame John Kelly for a lot of things, and he is a right winger, and I don't agree with him on almost any of the policy issues. But I can't blame him for getting frustrated with King Joffrey. Finally, this is my favorite part of the story. Apparently, they had to make policy issues into a childlike game for Donald Trump to pay attention. So the Post explains, under Kelly's watch, the president now has policy time. Sounds a little bit like nap time or play time. So he has policy time, sessions once or twice a day where advisors present and argue their competing views over a specific issue with Trump presiding. Oh, that's so embarrassing, Oh God. Look, if a president wants to have a policy discussion and there's two legitimate factions within his White House and he wants to do that in an organized way, probably once in a blue moon to hash out some interesting you know, complexities of a issue, well, that actually would be great. But in order to get him to focus on policy, they have to do like a reality show basically. Okay, it'll be Bob versus Susie and you get to vote one of them out at the end. And don't worry, you're the host, you're presiding over this and we'll call it policy time with the president. Oh, Okay, this is fun, then I'll pay attention. It has got to be dangerous for the world to have the most powerful man on earth and unfortunately in this case, Oftentimes it's fortunate, but right now it's definitely unfortunate that the President of the United States is the most powerful man on earth. And he's an absolute child. That has got to be a danger to the world. He's deeply unstable and God knows what he's gonna do next. And certainly his chief of staff doesn't. You just watched a video by the Young Turks, the home of the revolution. If you'd like to get the full show, come join us and become a member, TYT Network dot com slash join.